Good morning, everybody. Tuesday morning after Memorial Day. I hope you had a great Memorial Day. Uh, let us know what you were up to during Memorial Day. We had some amazing weather here in central Wisconsin. I spent the day putting together, I'm on step 21 of 37 on um, a playground for my kids in the backyard. So that was, that was brutal, man. People warned me that that's a brutal job. That is a brutal project. Uh, and they didn't include one of the most crucial pieces. So we can't even really finish it until that piece arrives. So let us know what you were up to during Memorial Day. Uh, and hopefully your day is starting out great. Uh, my day started out fine and then I got to work and I reached in my backpack and I saw my protein shake. Um, and for a split second, I was like, wait a minute, did I, did I pack that? Uh, or did I finish it at the house? And I drank it and I realized, uh, no, that was the one from Sunday. Uh, so that was disgusting. Yeah, I hope your morning started out better than that. But speaking of disgusting, I'm curious as you join, what's the most uh, disgusting job around the house, chore around the house that you do? For me, it's the sinks. It's snaking out the sinks, you know, uh, that, that nice black uh, gooey stuff that comes out that smells really not so great. That's the one I kind of dread, um, but I also take pride in being the only one in the house willing to do it. So anyway, let us know what your uh, least favorite chore is as you uh, clean the house. Toilets, somebody said. Okay, yep, that's, especially if you have little kids around, little boys, that can be pretty bad. Yep. So our text today is uh, from the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, and I'm going to read just one verse to you, verse 16. Actually, I'll read two verses. We'll start at verse 15. It's talking about Jesus. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. <clears throat> For by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Okay. Through him and for him. Think about that. God had some sort of it in mind for you when he created you. And when he created the ones that you love. And everybody. He had some kind of it, some kind of purpose in mind. And he had it in the in mind and the way he made our, our hands, our feet, our minds, our voices, our bodies, our brains, our hearts. And he created us to live out that it. And some people struggle with that because it can be easy to find, right? To discover what your it is. Oh, God, what did God create me for? Um, by God and for God or through him and for him. That is the key phrase, depending on what translation you're looking at. Um, when we don't know what we're made to do, it frustrates us in a lot of ways. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the Verizon guy. His name is Paul Marcarelli. And he was always the, can you hear me now? Good, can you hear me now? Good guy, right? And then he switched to Sprint, which is now T-Mobile. And something didn't feel right about that. I remember I was sitting by someone who said, that guy will never get another job in his life, right? It, it felt so wrong, like he was not living out his purpose. And and who's to say, right? It's just commercial. It's a silly illustration. Uh, but when you're living outside of your your purpose, right, or or God's vision for you, we, we feel it. Um, and when we don't, know what we're made to do, we, we get frustrated. And so we have to prayerfully discover that purpose. And we've talked about it before. We've talked about strengths, right? With spiritual strengths. And we've talked about uh, spiritual gifts. We all have them. Every believer, every Christian has at least one spiritual gift. But when we're not using those gifts for the kingdom, it's always going to feel like something is missing. 
right? No matter how fulfilling your life might be, when you're using your gifts for an it that's outside of God's it, it's going to feel like something's missing, okay? Because through him and for him is how we were designed. Through him and for him is how we were designed. So the church as a whole, we can fall in the same trap as the body of Christ, and we need constant reminders of that so we don't become a club, okay? So we need to keep our focus outward and remember Jesus' heart for the lost and the way he put everyone else first, the way he used his gifts that God had given him. He had, he's God. He has every gift, right? Um, so sometimes people spend a lot of time figuring out what is my gift, what is my gift, and then what did God call me to do? What did God create me to do? And they try to find that specific calling on their life, and that can be a trap too. Right To feel like, Ooh, what if I'm not doing exactly what God wants me to do right now? Well, God's given you freedom. Okay, God has given you freedom. The it is to serve Him. Okay, So whatever you're doing, where's your heart at? Okay, Wherever you're, you're working right now, whatever your, your vocation is right now in your life, uh, where, wherever that lands you, is it for you? Because you won't feel fulfilled. But is it... For God's purpose, is it through him and for him? You can, you can do that in almost anything that you do, right? Anything that you put effort into can be through him and for him. And we have to remember that. And when we do that, we live in our sweet spot, okay? We start to live with that it. Um, and that leads people to do th things like, say, you know, I just turned down um, an offer from a Fortune 500 company after I graduated law school so I could work with inner, inner city kids who need my legal expertise. Um, that's what causes somebody to say, I decided to cut my living expenses so I can give more to missions or more to the church. That's what causes somebody to say, I gave up my vacation to build a house in Mexico. We had some men do that in our church. Or I gave up my vacation to go on a youth trip uh, with some, some kids to pour into them. It could be really simple ways. But when we prayerfully seek our it, uh, we too can find our passion and get out of our box and use and develop those gifts. And so we remember Jesus' heart for the lost, using all of his gifts for the kingdom and what an impact that made on all of us, right? We're, we're reaping those benefits today. He's called us to do the same. Whatever gifts you have, whatever you enjoy doing, whatever you're good at, add some purpose to it, right? Sprinkle some of God's purpose on it and watch how much that changes uh, the fulfillment and the power of what you're doing. So with that, let's pray. God, we thank you for this time together this morning. Uh, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the way that you've created us for a purpose, Lord. And we know that uh, there's work to do in the kingdom. And you've called each one of us uh, to step into the light and to be light bearers and to carry out that work, Lord. And so whatever it is that we do even today, Lord, whatever it is that's on our schedule today, help us to glorify you in it uh, and to pour into the kingdom with whatever you're calling us to do. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, God's blessings, everybody. Take care. We'll be live again tomorrow morning. Have a blessed day.